Hey, welcome back. It is time for Saturdays with the Columbus Zoo. Sean is back with us, and we are going to be meeting with the Red Pandas. Obviously, she has become quite famous this past year. Yes, that's that's very true. And to uh, to probably for us, not an exciting way for her. To be <laughs> I know. I'm always like, let's talk uh, about the Great uh, Escape. You're like, no yeah, thanks. There's, there's a lot of success around that time period <laughs> for a lot of us around here, but. We are, we're right up here in our Asia Quest area with our red pandas. Um, this is Cora in here. I'm, I can't really tell you which one she is. She'd be the bigger one. I'm um, in there <laughs> with her two youngsters, oh. Bandit and Santi. So these are the clubs that she would have had um, last year. So you guys can see super active. And this is an animal that is way more active in early morning time periods and then later in the dusk, even in the wild. They're an animal that is probably active only about 45 percent of the day so they do sleep a lot in the wild um but you can see them it, it's a great time with the, the, the cooler temperatures in the morning oh. up there playing around they're so cute um what makes it a panda yeah so this is the crazy part they, there's a lot of in the science world there's a lot of debate on where they actually fall because okay. some people believe that they are related to the giant pandas some people believe they're related to raccoons but they actually sit in a family all by themselves. So there's a lot of debate still out there on exactly what type of family or what animal they're specifically related to. Um, and I think that they get their name Panda a lot because of the food they eat. This is an animal that eats a lot of bamboo. 90% of its diet is bamboo. But unlike the giant pandas, they also will consume a lot of other food too. So the giant pandas obviously eat only bamboo. Um, but this is an animal also that we're watching decline in the wild. So we're we're seeing roughly about 8,000 to 10,000 of these guys left in the wild, in the forested areas of uh, Himalayas, high up into the mountains, um, and parts of China also. But deforestation is their biggest um, downfall there, with people trying to destroy different forests, also with overgrazing from um, farm animals overgrazing in areas that would deplete the forest region. So is there anything that we can do I mean, to help in that situation. We're always wondering what we can do. Yeah, you know, and this is a hard one. Like this, I think, is one of the biggest challenges for zoos all around the country is how do we, how do we talk to people here in Columbus about helping animals in parts of China and what can we do here? And I think the biggest thing is just starting to take small actions every day for ourselves. And when I say that is I think about reducing. So reducing a lot of the things that we consume on a regular basis, we obviously understand that everything that we take in as, as humans comes from some part of the world. And so if we, can, if we can reduce what we use, it allows different parts of the forested areas throughout the entire world to remain and stay, and stay active and helps these. And then also, obviously, the easy one, coming to the Columbus Zoo. Um, when people come through our front gate, it allows us to give money into our conservation fund, which allows us to support different organizations over in the, the areas that the red panda lived in and support these animals in the wild. So what else do you have going on at the zoo right now? Yeah, so, so this weekend weather should be nice so people can come out and then next week we'll have egg falls and claws. We're, okay. we're, it's amazing that we're already at that point, uh, but April 2nd and April 3rd will be our egg falls and claws event here. So we'll start to see lots of different enrichment with animals around here folks can go to the columbuszoo.org website and learn more about that specific event and what's going on and we're still we're still reserving our tickets right for the zoo yeah yeah okay. we still have reserved ticket time so folks can go there until different types of uh numbers get lifted to where we can have more people on ground we'll stick to that um, time ticket component. Okay, I'm going to have to remind myself now to go reserve a time because yeah. I don't <laughs> want it to fill up. Um, is there anything else that we need to know about the red pandas before we leave you? No, I think, you know, if you want to see them active, getting here right off the bat when the zoo opens to try your best time or hanging out a little bit till towards the end of the day when they might be a little more active as the, as the temperature sort of drops. Um, but any cooler day, if it's a cooler day, they'll be active.